I happened to meet a coach who was uh, coaching the players for nearly 40 years. I asked him, sir, what does a racket mean to you? And then he told, uh, it's like my wife, it's like my life partner. Then he paused for a minute and then he told, even better, sir. And I asked, why, sir? He doesn't answer back, he told. Okay, and then he told, sir, why, why you say this? And then he told, see, we uh, go as friends, we look for the color. Fortunately or unfortunately, it comes in the same shape. And then you look for uh, the feel, you swing it uh, two, three times, and then you pay for it, you fall in love, you pray for it. I keep it close to my heart every day. I take it to my restroom, I sleep with it, I take it to the warm-up game, then I, whether I play or not, I carry it, then I bring it back, again I keep it close to me and I sleep with it. So much, so much it means to him, the racket. So he was saying like, at least, tell us how to choose the right racket, if not the partner. So this is an attempt for you to just giving an introduction, you're all very much experts here. So just an introduction to open the debate as to how to choose a racket, the basic steps, and then how to apply that into your shots. I'm just giving you just a basic introduction so that the panel could be opened up. On a formal note, champions, all you champions in waiting, and all your coaches, the king makers, a very good morning. I'll be speaking to you today about the racket science as to how to choose your racket. It's actually divided into two halves. First, we'll be dealing about the racket characteristics, the parts of the racket, and now how the second half is going to apply all these characteristics into your shots. What is the most important thing in your body or what is the most important thing in your racket? Well, of course, it's the head, isn't it? There's a study actually from the International Conference on Design and Concurrent Engineering. Okay. And trying to calculate that the entire, entire engineering of choosing a racket is all about trying to get that optimal power, isn't it? To deliver the shot. They're trying to, they have done a study as to try to figure out which spot will help you get that knockout punch, isn't it? And that spot is usually called as the sweet spot of your racket. Now, uh, who's holding the racket to the left of my dais? Can you please stand up? Is there anyone here who will tell me, a rough guide as to tell me where the sweet spot for the racket is? Okay, the most, most of you, most of your players would have seen this, isn't it? You usually try to tap it. Have you seen players tapping it? Okay, you look for something called as the resonance, isn't it? The bounce. The point at which the area of the racket that produces the most power, the best sound, and the best feeling, and the least vibration when you hit a shot. That's called the sweet spot. Thank you. So that's, that has been calculated for each and every racket and it varies depending upon the shapes. There are a lot of shapes in the market. The most important of them and the most of them which in play is either an isometric racket or an oval racket. Can you tell the difference both of, uh, between the both of it? I'm sure most of, you, most of you have a racket, isn't it? Just for the display, I've just passed a racket. It's very cheap, don't mind. Okay, so the isometric racket is basically more of a squarish shape compared to an oval racket. What happens is that the strings, the main string, the horizontal string, the string that runs from up to down, that string is smaller than an isometric racket compared to an oval racket. And what is the other difference, the most important difference? The importance is the sweet spot. Now in an isometric racket, the racket on the left has a wider sweet spot, which means if I, for example, me, a player who doesn't know anything about a game and I want to go and start, I shouldn't feel discouraged at that start. So choosing an isometric racket is much more intelligent because it has a wider sweet spot. So what happens, more often you tend to meet the cock at the sweet spot compared to an oval racket. Oval racket has a smaller sweet spot. So the chance of you meeting the cock at the right point is less. Okay, then why oval racket? Well, what the oval racket gains from an isometric racket is power. Okay, you lose on the area of the sweet spot, the spot which delivers the knockout punch to a smaller area, 
but the power which we generate out of the shot is much, much higher in an oval racket compared to an isometric racket. So that's the difference. For a beginner, it's always good to take an isometric racket. And definitely, after you develop your skills, I'm sure you will be able to adhere and change the concepts accordingly. Have you noticed this in your rackets? There's a small opening at the 5 o'clock as well as the 7 o'clock position, isn't it? Now, the technology is advancing so much that when you go up for a jump and you deliver a knockout punch, this technology seems to take the resistance out of the air which, is going, which the racket is going to face. It's called as vintage resistance counter. Now, this has been designed specifically now in the racket you're getting at the 5 o'clock at the 7 o'clock position, which helps to prevent the resistance which you make out of a shot. I'm sure you'll be noticing it more often now in your rackets. Now, who's having the racket? Please. See, there is uh, again, the racket gets classified. I, I think so, you can again circle it again. <laughs> This uh, racket again gets classified again into three types. They are again classified into a head heavy racket, a head light racket, and a balanced racket. I just put a small picture at the end of the slide. That's the easiest me method to check what racket is, what is your racket. Can anyone of you stand you? I, I think I passed a racket around. Uh, it's just a simple guide for you to understand. Come on, dude. Satak, sir, you can just, just, if you can focus on him, you know, the idea is to try and find out whether it's a head heavy racket, a head light racket, or an isometric racket. Three types, monotype. The head heavy, na, it's going to be heavy at the head. The entire the Badminton Federation recommends a length, particular length for the racket, around 665 uh, centimeters actually. So, at what you try to do, sir, is try to find out the... Sir, please stand. Tamil Deva me. Please stand. Sir, come Sir, stand there, stand there. We are focusing on you. Sir, now there are three types of racket, sir. Head heavy, head light, balanced. Three. The racket is weight in concentrated. Okay. So, on the racket, approximate or mid position. Select the center point of that racket, approximately. Select, select. Select it. Okay, now you try to balance that racket with that finger. Sir, one finger. One barrel. Okay. Where is tilt? Towards the grip. So, that will be a head light racket. So, if it's going to go towards the head. Now, if there's a head heavy, there's a head light. Oh, that's going to be an isometric racket also. Okay, three types. Now, head heavy, what happens is that, Talayla, power jasi the weight jasi. Now, most important thing is that, I'm a string puni rikhi, only racket's already string. But the choosing or labeling of the racket happens before it is stringed. Okay, string ulla porrath ko munnadiye, they check whether it's a head heavy, head light or a isometric racket. So, when you have a head heavy racket, it's going to be more for your power shots. Okay, it gives more power to the shot which you play. But what happens? Weight arge, so the movement becomes restricted. But head light racket will be able to move. Light arge nala, so it's going to move much. much. Now you're going to have more amount of beginners. You're going to start players who are going to come to uh, learn to you. So those players will need an isometric racket. A racket which will have the balance of both. So they can understand what their game is and then choose whether they need a head heavy racket or a head light racket. That's the whole point. So there are three types, head heavy, head light as well as a balanced racket. Next thing is the flexibility. Now the initial fact was, initial point was that the flexible racket is better. Flexibility, it's like a catapult. The So they thought initially that, uh, that flexibility component will help in giving that extra force into the shot. That was the initial thinking. But, now the latest concept is when you're going in more of an aggressive type of play, when you're going to play more amount of shots, that flexibility component actually seems to reduce the power. Okay? Say, for example, if you're playing at the back court and if you're playing or another player playing at the net court, the player at the net court will not have much amount of time to generate a swing. And he will not have much amount of time to even generate the, the distance in itself will be very, very less. So at that point, if you have a racket which is flexible, 
it's like a bow string isn't it it's going to give that repulsive force into the shot to take the cock across but if you're standing at the back and you have more time to see judge and then deliver it if you're going to pay at the base court then you will need a racket which is going to be stiffer compared to a flexible racket the other point is string tension string tension usually i i heard most of the coaches usually ask for ask for the particular restriction that's how it is that they always have a predetermined string tension for a particular company okay this string tension usually is supposed to be kept at 30 pounds for the horizontal strings the horizontal strings and the vertical strings is supposed to be kept at 28 pounds nareya irundhalum prachana kammiya irundhalum prachana a heavy or a highly strung racket could even break racket e odanjirum nu solranga actually a romba string panni tight pannirundha now it gets more done by machines now grip size again has evolved it has evolved first initially we required a very very large grip more the better the grip better the shots they thought but now we are going more towards a smaller grip and an extra small grip idea being flexibility chinna grip you can flexible more flexible in the hand more deception more shots more coverage okay okay the other thing is the weight and the length again prescribed by the fair and federation the length approximately shouldn't exceed 680 mm okay what i want to un- when i when usually i was visiting a few of the academies around in coimbatore you just see the place how they remove the racket out of the sheath you know you just feel so excited for some of them it's like going for a war you know they are ready to go and unleash themselves for some it's a jack sparrow you know they are going to go and deceive you isn't it they have that you know instinct when they just removing the racket out of the sheath i am sure they need no introduction isn't it one is a player who delivers on smash the other is a player of deception our own prakash padukone isn't it so basically what i am trying to convey is that you should try to understand what your basic instinct of your player is and now try to cater the racket characteristics according to the player characteristic okay so basic are shots i have just just giving an introduction you are all experts you are all practical guys you are going to deliver knockout shots okay they divided into two categories basically i am op- just opening the discussion an attacking shot is a clear a smash and a drive and a defensive shots are as such now what is a clear shot this shot is actually delivered from the base of the court to the so the video is not running from the okay the basic idea is to hit the shot from the base of the court and push the player to the back of the opposite court that's the clear shot now the shuttle cock is usually hit from the so don't control okay so the idea is this the clear is a shot which is usually played from the back of the court and it is delivered to the back of the opponent player's court now the amount of distance it travels is nearly the entire court's length so what you will need is a very powerful as well as a very stable racket the second one will be a smash i think no one uh, will be having a doubt about smash smash is usually hit from a level uh, just check with the running of the slides it's not running okay the smash is usually hit from above downwards to a point where it is delivered at a point blank okay it travels at a very high speed and it is uh, landing at the opponent's mid court okay again you will need a very very powerful racket so that it delivers much amount of force into the shot now the other shot is a drive the drive is hit from a point between the shoulder and the waist so till now the smash as well as the drive is saying it was being hit above the shoulder now this is being hit between the shoulder as well as okay it's between the shoulder as well as the waist so what is this is a counter attacking shot usually when you are playing a, you are already facing a russell crow and you are already a russell crow then you will need to have a shot up your sleeve to face a attacking player opposite also so what happens is that you will need a racket which is much more stable to take the power of the shot as well as deliver it back with the same force so that he is also thrown off guard so the shot that is required for this will be a drive okay the defensive shot net lift the shuttle cock is usually hit from upwards below the waist tight and in front of the net court so what it does is a basically a lob it carries the uh, shuttle cock from the net court and pushes the player to the back court now what this generates is the extra amount of time that the player needs to go back and take the shot so you recover it out of the shot which you have played and play your next shot you more often throws the player off guard 
Okay, that's a drop shot, a slow and fast. A slow drop shot is usually hit from the back court, the area of the point under the shoulder height. Now, what it does is that pull, pulls the player to the net court and then helps you deliver the point. Most important thing, the racket should be stable, and the most important thing is it should have a little bit of deception. Now, a backstop, again, a very passive shot. You're meeting a player who is keeping on smashing at you. All you need is to just take the shot. What is required is a racket should be very, very stable, so it'll take the force and just give it back. It's a backstop. And I think most of you will agree with me that if smash is the shot for a very, very hardbound player, then a cross-court net shot is a shot for a deceptive player. More amount of rapid exchanges across the net, not much amount of time for you to react. So you'll need a racket which will give that flexibility component, that amount of force which will take the repulsive force and help you get the cock across the net. Passive shot, again, a shot which will usually help you to take a rally through, something like a Rafael Nadal game. You wear the opponent out and then you take on to the game. Now characterizing both of them, usually you have an offensive player or a defensive player. You're either a Johnny Depp or you're a Russell Crowe. So what it does, what, if you're an offensive player, then you will need a racket, which is either isometric or old, depending upon your power. You'll need a very, very head-heavy racket to deliver that knockout punch. You need a stiff shaft because you're more often going into play a shot. The racket should be heavy and the grip should be small. So you can add on to a little bit of deception. Too much, aren't they? The deception is more of a maneuverable player. Someone who will need a racket which is isometric as well as an oval or depending upon your game. A headlight so you can move the racket around fast. A flexible shaft so that you can deliver the shot across. Tension around 28. The weight is supposed to be light and a grip better to have an extra small grip. So if you try to plot, the red component is an attacking player. So you will need a head heavy racket. At the same time, it should be very stiff. A head light racket as well as a flexible shaft for a defensive player. So the idea of the entire talk was to take the right racket home, choose your racket which suits your style of play. After speaking all this, no over a pace is going. We know the racket, none tension, no answer putting. I think. Okay. This is what I choose. For most often, all I swing are a bunch of mosquitoes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh